Hey everyone, uh, my name is Kelvin and welcome to my Procreate watercolor tutorial. Uh, in this video we're going to paint this sort of tropical jungle landscape scene. And uh, although it might look a little bit complicated, uh, the technique I'm using here is so simple, it's so easy to follow, uh, and I think anybody could do this even if you're just starting out. So the first thing I'm going to do is start off with a new blank watercolor paper texture. And I'm going to use the uh, normal paper texture today. And I'm also going to use the normal watercolor brush kit. And uh, I'll put links to both of those in the description down below. So I'm going to start by making a really quick sketch. So I know this sketch is, is a little bit crazier than what I usually do. Um, but um, let's see what we can do here. So very simple. Palm trees, sky, first layer of mountains, middle ground layer of mountains, and then the uh, foreground here with some cool plant details. So I'm going to start with the distant mountains. So let's make a new layer and I'm going to make sure it's underneath my sketch because I'm going to lighten my sketch just so I can barely, barely see it just like that. You might not even be able to see it very well in the video. So as long as I'm underneath uh, that sketch, I'm going to grab the abstract round brush and usually mountains in the distance, even if they're covered in green trees, they're going to look a little bit bluish. So I'm going to choose a kind of a bluish green. I think that'll work. So I'll shrink the size a little bit and just try to do some rough, very rough mountains like that. Uh, and then I want to blur the bottom with the water blender. So pretty big size. I'm just going to go over and just fade the bottom of those mountains. You know, in my mind, I'm thinking as if mist is kind of rising up. That's good for the distant mountains. So I'm going to make a new layer. Uh, I'm going to make sure it's underneath those mountains or actually I'll do it on top of the mountains here and I'll do the uh, closer mountains. And the closer something gets when it's covered in green trees, the more green it will get. The further away, the lighter and more blue it gets. So this is going to be maybe a little bit darker, but also quite a bit more green just to sort of show, uh, show you that it's closer up. So I'm going to use the abstract round brush. The closer mountains are going to be a little bit softer than the distant ones. So same deal, I'm going to use the water blender and just sort of blend the bottom. Just in my mind thinking as if maybe some mist was kind of rising up there from the valley. And I think I will move this a little bit, just a little bit higher. There we go. And I want to add a cool detail on this. So as long as I have that same color selected, I'll just make one more layer on top of this. And I'm going to grab the smooth round a brush, pretty small size there. Uh, and I'm going to stay away from the edges because I have my palm trees there, but over in this middle area, I'm going to try to draw some tiny little palm trees. And the uh, leaves on the palm trees are pretty easy to do. Just keep in mind that a palm tree is, is actually very oval shaped. They're not usually round. And uh, those are pretty simple. Uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time making them perfect because this whole scene is going to be pretty loose. So that looks pretty good. I'm just going to play with the opacity because I did do those on a different layer. And I'll see what they look like if I just do them really light there just so they're kind of faded. And then I'll just merge it together so that now these closer up mountains are on one layer with these little palm trees. So now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to do the foreground area with these um, cool kind of leaves down here. And I'm going to use a cool technique for that. But the first thing I'm going to do is make another layer and I'm going to use the selection tool this time set to freehand. And I'm going to try to just highlight this area like that. But towards the top, I'm going to give it this kind of interesting uh, bumpy pattern. So while this selection is active, I can use the abstract round brush. And using the same green color that I did those distant mountains, maybe I'll make it just a little bit darker. Um, if I set that brush pretty big, and then I, I do it like this, what will happen is it'll only paint in that selection I've made. So it's kind of a way to have a kind of like a cutout effect, I guess. So I like the way that looks. Maybe I'll add some more uh, variation there. And I'm, while it's still selected, I'll grab the water blender and just blend this up a little bit, just so I have some interesting uh, variation in the tones there. There we go. I like this. I like this kind of random variation in there. So I'll deselect it. And I want to give this a kind of ombre effect, I guess. I want it to have this light green on top and I want it to fade to almost a black down here. So I'll grab that selection tool and I'm going to select about halfway like this. Uh, and then I'm going to feather that selection to really soften it just like that. I'll go to my hue, saturation and brightness 
Uh, and I'll just lower the brightness there, think like that, and I'll maybe play with the saturation. So we'll zoom out here. So we kind of have, I'm, what I'm trying to do is get this effect where it fades to a darker color. So I think I will lighten the top here. So using a similar trick, I'll just use that freehand selection tool, make a selection just covering the top. But instead of darkening it this time, I'm going to lighten it. So I'll go over to hue, saturation, and brightness. And just brighten that. Maybe saturate it and shift it a little bit towards a warmer color. So now I have this cool ombre effect and a lot of interesting texture going on here. But I also want to add some leaves and plants. And there's a cool technique for doing that. But let me turn off my sketch so we can see this a little better. So I'll just turn that off for now. And I'm going to zoom in here. And I'll use the selection tool set to freehand. And I'll just roughly um, sketch out some just random off the top of my head uh, plants and stuff. So there we go. We just have some really simple, almost childish shapes. Uh, I'll go to hue, saturation, and brightness. And I'll just brighten that a little bit. And you can see it just sort of brings them out of the uh, darkness there. Might shift the hue a little bit towards blue. Maybe raise the saturation a bit. And that's only the first layer. I'm going to grab that selection tool again. And I'm going to do another layer of these, but I'm going to do them uh, smaller with more detail. There we go. So I've got our second layer of selection here. And I'll do the same technique. I'll just raise the brightness and sort of bring those out of the darkness. And I'll shift the hue a little bit as well, maybe a little bit warmer, and then raise the saturation just a little bit. So that's a really simple way to add just a kind of a jungle detail into just this open area. Um, it's not a perfect technique, but it works. And uh, I think it's really uh, fun to do. So let's zoom out here. And what we've got to do next is we're going to do the palm trees. And then at the very end, I'll show you how, to, how I'm going to do the sky. But for the palm trees, um, I think it's a good idea to just merge what we have onto one layer, just like this, by pinching those together. Now everything we've painted is now on one layer. And uh, let me clean up the edge here with the eraser tool. And uh, for the palm trees, I'm going to do them on a different layer above everything. And I'll select a kind of brownish color, I think, for the uh, trunk of the palm tree. I don't, want to, I don't want it to be too yellow, though. I'd almost rather it be sort of towards red. And uh, I'll use the abstract round brush. And I am going to get this overlap effect, but I'll show you how to fix that later on. So at a medium size, I'm just going to roughly do some palm tree uh, trunks like this. And I might go over it a few times just to, so I have this kind of layering texture effect. And since I'm on a different layer, I can sort of position those so they frame the scene just a little bit better. So there we go. I'm happy with those palm trunks. And I do see this transparency effect. It doesn't really look that good, but I'll show you how to fix that in a minute. I'm going to do the top of the palm trees as well, the palm fronds up here. So the way I like to do it, especially following the technique or the, the appearance of this scene, is I'm going to make a, a new layer. And I'm going to start with a really light, sort of faded green color like this. And I'll use the abstract round brush. About the same size I did the trunks. And I'll just try to rough in some sort of palm fronds like this. And uh, I do have that transparent effect. But now that I've got everything roughed in, I have the rough trunk and the roughed in palm fronds, I'm going to erase the background uh, in all the areas where these palm tree uh, covers up. So let me select the background here. And I'll grab the eraser tool. And if I zoom in, using that eraser tool, I can just sort of erase the background. But I don't want to go too crazy like that. I'm going to try to follow the edge of the trunk here, as well as the palm fronds, and just sort of make it as if I had planned this. There, so I've gone through and erased uh, the background uh, everywhere these palm trees were kind of covering it up. And that makes it look like I just sort of planned the whole scene a little bit better. And uh, this is one of the advantages I really like when doing watercolor on the iPad is I can kind of go back in time and erase an earlier step. So this is looking pretty good. I just want to finish these palm fronds. So I'm going to select the palm frond layer. And I'll choose a darker version of that same green. And using that abstract round brush to at a pretty, smaller, uh, pretty small size, I'm just going to rough in the detail really quickly here with these. There we go. I think that looks pretty good. Um, I do want to shift the hue of the top of these leaves. I want to give them this sort of transparent effect. And the way I do that is I'll grab the selection tool, set to freehand, and I'll just select the very top of these uh, palm fronds. Uh, and then I'll feather that out. 
and then using the hue and saturation, I'll shift it a little bit over to the left. That's towards a warmer color. And then I'll brighten it just a little bit, as well as raise the saturation. And that does give it a very faint, sort of transparent look, as if the light from the scene behind is coming through the leaves. So I'm happy with that. Uh, I'm going to merge all the, all the layers for the palm trees together. So I've got the palm fronds and the trunks on one layer. And I'm just going to grab that selection tool again and just give some texture to the trunk here, just kind of a zigzag texture. And uh, I'll use the uh, same trick, hue, saturation, and brightness. And I'll just raise the brightness. Actually, I think I'll lower it this time just a tiny bit and maybe shift the hue a little bit towards a warmer color. The next part I want to show you is how I like to do the sky. So let me go to the layers panel and I'm just going to merge the palm tree and the background scene here all together onto one layer. And I am going to move it down because I'm getting a little bit close to the top of my artboard there. And I want the top of the scene to be kind of uh, arched like that. So what I'll do is I'll make a new layer, but I'll put it underneath the scene. And I'll choose a kind of greenish blue color for the sky. And uh, I'll use the abstract round brush. And uh, at medium size like that, I'll just sort of just roughly do the arch of the sky like that. And uh, I might want to reposition it just a little bit. Uh, and then I'm going to use the water blender. And I'm going to fade that down into the scene. And once I'm happy with that gradient, I'm just going to grab the selection tool set it to freehand, and I'm just going to select kind of the very top of the sky. Uh, I will feather that out, maybe 30% like that, and hue, saturation, and brightness, and I'll just shift this towards a little bit of a colder color, almost towards purple, something like that, just so I have this kind of greenish, hazy sky fading up into a regular kind of a blue sky like that. And uh, this whole sky does look a little bit dark, so I'll just lighten the uh, transparency until I'm happy with how it looks. There we go, just so I can barely see the sky there. And uh, this could be done as it is, but what I like to do is sort of give a random variation of color to the whole painting. So I'll merge everything onto one layer, and let's zoom out here. I'll use that selection tool on freehand, and I'll just make a random crazy selection that just covers some random areas like that. And uh, I'll feather it out quite a bit, and I'll go to hue, saturation, and brightness, and I'll just introduce maybe a little bit of a warmer color. You can see it in a few areas like this, just like that, just so I have some interesting colors here. And then I'll do it again, but I'm going to try to select some different areas this time. But this time I'll feather it out a little bit less, like that. And then again, hue, saturation, and brightness. And I'll just play with this until I'm happy with how it looks. So this is done. Uh, this is how I paint and kind of lay out and plan a very simple watercolor landscape scene. Uh, let me know what you think of this video in the comments, and uh, if you have any suggestions for future videos, uh, please let me know. I'd love to hear of those. But uh, other than that, guys, thank you so much for your support. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.